Hey, welcome back to Review Crew. I'm Owen. And I'm Luke. And today we're going to be reviewing Borat 2. Check out the trailer. Fourteen years ago, I released a movie film which brought great shame to Kazakhstan. But now I was instructed to return to Yankee Land to carry out secret mission. I go to America! What do you say? No, it's not me. Boy, come back! People make recognize my face. I would need disguises. This man is a sex criminal? No, no sex criminal. I will take this to be a fat <laughs> like American man. Yeah? This is a good one. <laughs> Where is his crumb? What is problem, officer? somebody that's strapped to the top of your car. You need to sit in that passenger seat, boss. Only men and bears are allowed inside car. I'm here to give my daughter as a gift to someone close to the throne. I need dress with real sexy peels. Uh, this is a bag that just goes mm, over the dress. They're nice. I really like this. Let us present Sandra Jessica Parker Drummond. This one with the baby on it. Oh. I have a baby inside me. Can you take it out? No, we cannot. That's not what we do here. I feel bad because I was the one who put the baby in her. Did you ever put one in your daughter? No, I did not. Where is everybody? They're wanting everybody to quarantine so they don't spread this virus. Could I stay in your home? I hope quarantine mm -hmm. never ends. What is more dangerous, this uh, virus or the Democrat? Democrats. 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 Uh, it's uh, killing some of the virus. No, you can't see the virus. No, it's still there. If you think you see a virus go like that. This makes That's the right. virus sleepy. And then when it's sleeping, the daddy has a lot to learn. My daddy is the smartest person in the whole flat world. <laughs> while the risk of coronavirus remains low, as the president said yesterday, we're ready for anything. Michael Penis, I brought the girl for you. Borat's subsequent movie film. You fist me. <laughs> right. Now I fist you? Right. There you what go. do you prefer? You fist me or I fist you? Same time. Fist each other. There, yeah. you, go. there you go. All right, so that was the trailer. So Luke, what were your first thoughts, first impressions? It's been a while since we, we had uh, the last Borat movie. Yes. Um, well, first immediate thought was, wow, Sasha Baron Cohen has aged. I mean, you can kind of see the wrinkles and you can, you can see the time on his face, definitely. Um, to be honest, and I know we were talking about this before um, the review, I wish that I watched the first Borat again, either right before or right after, because I saw that thing like six years ago. And of course I remember the funniest moments, but I, to put it right next to this one, I'm having trouble determining like which one is more funny, but I'm, do you have a thought on that? Yeah. And I, I kind of went back and forth cause you know, I, I do love the first movie, but it had been a while since I watched it. And so I watched it yesterday. <laughs> Uh, to kind of refresh my thoughts before I watch the second one. Yeah. And I got to say, I prefer the second one. Um, I mean, no. there's there's things about, you know, the first Borat movie in just his character and his lovability, I guess, um, that I guess some people would prefer. But I think Borat 2 is more of a... It's more of a, a lesson and more of a message uh, rather than just being a spectacle. And I think, you know, with the type of humor that is in both of these movies, it's more to get a reaction. Um, but I think in terms of 
like the political message of Borat too, I, I much prefer it uh, to the first movie. Yeah, there's definitely, um, honestly, like a good message in it too with the whole storyline with his daughter. And, you know, it's, it's, the whole thing is political commentary, but then it's also like um, feminist commentary as well. Like she becomes this strong, empowered woman and the most sexist man on the planet, Borat, becomes, you know, like, um, he says at the end, like, I love you more than my sons, which is, like, forbidden in Kazakhstan. So it's, yeah. yeah, this one, like, leaves you a little bit, like, empowered. Like, Borat is, like, a becoming a new man, almost. <laughs> yeah, and then um, as far as, like, the famous people in each of these movies, so I'd say in Borat 1, the first one, Pamela Anderson uh, and, like, the book signing incident was probably the most, um, I guess, notable. She was the most notable public figure in that movie. And then yeah. fast forward, uh, you know, years later, almost two decades later, we have Rudy Giuliani. Uh, and he, my God, I mean, that scene was just haunting in all the worst ways. Uh, and I, I read that, you know, Sasha Baron Cohen, like, himself just was too uncomfortable with that. He's like, okay, I can't put, you know, this girl in this position. I have to break this up. And I think honestly, if he had kept that scene going a little bit longer, even like a minute, Rudy Giuliani's career would just be destroyed. Oh yeah. We would have seen his penis. I mean, that would have been absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. I mean like regardless of what like political affiliation you align with, I feel like, there's no there's no gray area with this. I mean, you saw him start to take off his pants and, like, fondle himself. And it's yeah. on camera, you know. We have the receipts. <laughs> and a lot of people are saying, like, you know, you can't blame him so much because the reporter was, like, touching his leg and asking him to go into the bedroom. But, I mean, think about it as if this actress was the actual character that she's playing. She's never done an interview before. She lets him know that she's um in the film she's supposed to be like 15 but he probably thinks she's like early 20s a foreigner who won't you know tell anybody he's clearly taking advantage of all those ideas and gonna you know have sex with her it's it's even if it was like entrapment like these people were saying his the way he went about this was so clearly you know taking advantage of a young reporter oh yeah um so let's get into the plot a little bit so as far as the first movie, I can't really say, you know, I, I guess it was just kind of Borat coming to America and just experiencing the culture for the first time and showing all these stupid people and Borat acting a fool. But this movie, we saw Borat on a mission. He is going to restore glory to the nation of Kazakhstan and uh, marry off his daughter to Mike Pence uh, as, as a gift. <laughs> which I, I thought was pretty funny. Um, and so right off the bat, you got uh, Borat going to this, like, I don't know if it was like a, some kind of conservative convention or like a Second Amendment uh, convention, but Mike Pence goes up on stage and Borat comes running in in the Trump costume <laughs> with his daughter over his shoulder saying, Pence, like, I have a gift. <laughs> and... Uh, that quickly derails Borat from his journey, and he realizes he's got he's to gotta go after Giuliani. But along the way, we meet several characters. Um, my, my favorite uh, group of people he talked to, or just, like, seen, I guess, was when uh, the kind of right-wing guys, uh, the Trump supporters who are super into the Second Amendment, they let Borat stay at his house, and yeah. they, they offer him a place to sleep, and try to help him find his daughter. And then he goes to this second amendment rally, like the, the March for our freedom or whatever. And then it goes up on stage. What did you think of that scene? Well, I just love how he brings out the hypocrisy and stupidity in these super stubborn characters. Like these men are obviously like two homophobic Republican guys that are talking about like the Kung flu and stuff like that. And, but then um, Borat is like working out before before that scene. He's like working out with like a dildo on, and then like it's they're supposed to hate him, but then when he gives them credit for something, like he's like, "Oh, these two people helped me write this song." They're like, "Yeah, go Borat!" It's so funny how like he makes like 
this character that they would so hate, but he makes them like love him. Like they're like cheering him on when he goes on stage. That scene was so funny. Um, like the chop them up like the Saudis do and how everybody is screaming that. Dude, he, he escalates at every level. And that's also part of the reason why I like this movie. I feel like, you know, Borat... Uh, one, as much of a spectacle as he was in that movie, I feel like in this movie, it, the stakes were even higher. Um, yep. You know, going on stage at the, the Second Amendment rally after talking to these guys, which, by the way, like you said, the, the, their hypocrisy, when he's talking to them about the origins of COVID and stuff, he's like, what would you say is more dangerous, liberals or coronavirus? They're like, definitely liberals, <laughs> definitely. And then uh, when he shows them... You know, and he's he's talking about like uh, just conspiracies on how COVID came to be and like its origins and stuff. And then he shows them uh, like a book about like Kazakhstan, like women and stuff. And they say, "Nah, man, that's a conspiracy." <laughs> you just think <laughs> yeah. you're, you're you're like what? <laughs> just so ridiculous. Um, and then going up on stage in front of all those people, it seemed like it was going very well in the movie. But um, I remember a couple months ago before the movie came out, mm -hmm. uh, it was a big deal on Twitter. Borat chased out, uh, chased off stage. And I don't know if you've seen this video, but oh. he, he has like a getaway car there just in case something, you know, goes wrong. And after all that, you know, chop him up like the Saudis do, gas him up like the germans do all that stuff uh he actually gets booed off stage by these alt-right people and chased into his van and like driven out of there like evacuated oh, god yeah. wow i had no idea yeah he <laughs> he gets like a standing ovation in the movie you definitely don't get that sense from watching the movie yeah and um i i saw an interview with sasha baron cohen uh, I think it was with Stephen Colbert where he said, this is the first time in any of my movies I've had to wear a bulletproof vest, which kind of says something. Yeah. Yeah, because he's taking on, because, of course, this nation is so divided. And, yeah, like in Borat, you've said this. It's the spectacle. It's more of um, pranks for pranks' sake. But this is pranks for, you know, the politics' sake, you know? Like, these they, these pranks are definitely more heavy. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it's it's really hard to compare the first two movies, but if I if I had to compare them, I would say Borat two, a little bit superior. Just the story. Um, I thought the production value is a bit higher too. I uh, yeah, I like the the music kind of montage scenes they do. I thought the pranks mm -hmm. were still really funny, like the ones not having to do with I guess the main plot, like when uh, they go to the abortion clinic. Uh, <laughs> And they're talking to the what was it even an abortion clinic? Who was that guy? He was like a like a pastor or something. I don't think he was like a real doctor. It was like an oh. advising center. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> you know, of course, like his daughter eating the, the cupcake with a little baby on it. <laughs> He's saying, I put this baby inside of her. Um <laughs> just all that innuendo. Uh, I think my second yeah. my second favorite character, or maybe even before Borat in this movie, was um, the fax guy. That Borat, <laughs> that guy yeah. was hilarious. Yeah, just the deadpan response to everything and yeah. his, his willingness to like fax literally anything he says. <laughs> They're not gonna kill you, and they like high five and Borat like <laughs> kisses him. It's so funny. Yeah, I mean, I just wonder has. Is this the limit? Is this the last Borat we're going to see? Because, you know, we saw earlier in the movie when he arrives in America, supposedly people recognize him on the street and he has to go get disguises to to prevent yeah. people from recognizing him. Um, and now that, you know, the stakes have been raised so high, uh, I'm wondering if this is the peak. If I don't know. Yeah. Uh, are we going to see more Borat, you think? I don't think so because of what you said. And also, you see Sasha Baron Cohen now doing a lot of dramatic roles, you know? He's filling his time with, like, um, the Chicago 7, and he did that Netflix series, Spy. Um, like, he's doing a lot of... Not that this is not meaningful, because it's comedy, and it has 
just because it's comedy doesn't mean it's not meaningful. I mean, he's exposing the truths of the American people. But, like, you see him doing a lot of these dramatic roles. So I feel like he's kind of almost like Jason Bateman is, is like, moving into a dramatic actor. Like, I feel like this was, like, his last touchdown. I mean, I could be wrong, but, like, you know, just his last, like, peace out to the comedy community i mean i hope not but i feel like that might be what it is i mean this definitely not a bad note to go out on um if you had to rate it out of 10 what would you what would you give it mm, out of 10 i would rate it probably i would rate it like a 7.7 .7 because i in my mind after i watched it and this may be an unpopular opinion but i liked bruno better than both Borat. A hot take. So yeah, so like in my mind, that's why I'm rating it because I think Borat is like, or Bruno is like in, in the eight range. And so I, if I like that one better, I can't, I can't be rating it as high. Understandable. Um, I would probably give it, honestly, like a nine. Cause you know, not every joke landed, but when they do land, I mean, they hit different. <laughs> Yeah. And the, yeah, yeah, the Rudy definitely. Giuliani thing really just just made the whole thing um, ten times better. Uh, all right, we'll be right back after this commercial break. That's all for this week. If you want to follow more Review Crew content, go to the Review Crew Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, as well as Orange TV Network on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, and YouTube. Find the Review Cues podcast on our Spotify or on our website at orangetvnetwork.syr.edu, where you can also find our blog and more OTN information. See you next week.